So first, let me just add to Vice Chancellor Thomas's wonderful welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All of us from our leadership team, the deans of our schools and colleges, our student affairs professionals, our faculty, our student, great student government association. And importantly, our many partners in this great city of Newark, including our terrific mayor, whom you'll hear from soon today. We all are so thrilled to welcome you to this university, a place where you will not only expand your prodigious talents from the arts to sciences, from business to criminal justice and public administration and law, but as importantly, where you will use those expanded and ever-expanding talents to make a better, more just, more innovative, more thoughtful, more empathetic, more inclusive community of scholars and citizens. You are here to create a model that can spread across geographies and inspire others to take up the drumbeat of what I'm going to call knowledge-informed justice. Now that is a tall order, I know. But I also know how much hopeful energy, not to mention grit and perseverance, and of course just plain intelligence individually and collectively is in this room today. Look around. This is a room that can make a difference. And we're charging you with that mandate. Now let's think, what would a world powered by knowledge-informed justice look like? And how do we collectively get there? Well, you know, sometimes the best way to define a desired state of the world is by looking at its counterfactual. And in this instance, all we have to do is look around our nation, our globe, our landscape, to see one that is decidedly not powered by knowledge, not inching toward justice. If we were powered by knowledge, would children be exposed to air and soil pollutants resulting in high rates of asthma and absenteeism in school? Just ask our earth and environmental scientists or our public health scholars or our advocates at the Health Education Advocacy Law Collaborative, better known as HEAL. If we were inching toward justice, would we see skyrocketing economic inequality even as the economic indicators all positively soar? Just ask our sociologists, our economists, the folks at the business school, the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development. If our policies were shaped by accumulated knowledge, would we ignore the contributions made over so many generations by waves of immigrants coming to enrich our country whom we now choose to exclude? Would we? Just take a walk to Express Newark, the University Community Arts Collaboratory in the Haynes Building, and ask our artists and public humanists teaming up with journalists and citizens to produce the stories of the newest Americans right here in Newark. If justice powered our practices, would the data compiled by our very own Dean of Public Affairs and Administration, Charles Minifield, show so starkly the racial disparities in police shootings and rates of incarceration across the nation, would it? Just ask the researchers in criminal justice, the practitioners in social work and law, the citizens on the Newark Community Street Team. Ask them, they'll tell you. 
And of course, let's not forget education. The royal road to prosperity and well-being in a knowledge economy. If knowledge informed justice, would so many talented children be left on the sidelines of opportunity in underperforming, under-resourced schools? Schools in New Jersey now as segregated by class and race as those in the South more than 60 years after the landmark decision of Brown v. Board. Just ask our colleagues in law and urban education in the Newark City of Learning Collaborative as they use data and that history and the precedents to right the ship of civil rights as rendered off course by the state of public education today. Now, admittedly, this is an uplifting day, and those are hard wrongs to right. And even more people to ask to help inform the process of change making, to guide the future informed by what we know, and to steer it on a path toward empowerment and justice, toward equitable and inclusive opportunity for more people in more communities like ours. Yes, it's a tall order, and that change won't happen over a night. After all, it took decades, if not centuries, to get us now to this questionable state of our nation. Yet the good, no great news, great news, is that we have all that expertise, all those thinkers and doers steeped in their fields, ready to walk together with you. Right here at Rutgers Newark, and as significantly, right here in Newark. Right here in Newark. Right here in Newark, where there's more knowledge sharing more collaboration, more engagement with the world, more recognition of the value of diverse perspectives and experiences on the ground, formal and informal, young and old alike, than anywhere I know. And folks, I've been doing this for a long time, believe me. For what Rutgers Newark and Newark share, is an identity built around striving. If there's one word that fills this room and better fill this whole city and nation, it's striving. Nothing fancy, nothing coming easily, nothing handed to us, a history of striving that just doesn't waver or give up. Does that sound familiar? I venture it's in your DNA, in all the DNA around us, I'd argue. It might not be in the DNA beyond here, but it is in yours and in ours. And with that willpower comes an eye on the prize that also doesn't waver or close up. Keep those eyes open on that prize. Even more than perseverance, that history, that DNA of lived experience here, it brings a pragmatic modesty. Remember that. A willingness to value others' expertise, to see the worth in the on-the-ground authentic insights they come directly from many corners of life experience. So if you leave this room, or as you leave this room, not yet, but as you leave this room, leave it together. Leave it together. Leave it by listening to others. Leave it with striving and modesty in equal proportion. Stand together, work on pooling knowledge to inform 
justice. You are the change makers we are counting on. And we're here to boost your effort at making change. If there's one motto I'd give you to live by here, it is we are the ones. But I don't mean we, pardon my I mean you are the ones. That's why you're here. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a real need these days for someone to be the ones. So it better be you. So welcome, and take it on, take it on. That's why you're here. <laughs>